Hello everybody, my name is Trollmaker and this is War Game Talk, the semi-frequent podcast for War Game Airland Battle. This week, we start off with mods. Yes, it can be confirmed, there will be modding in Red Dragon. Modders have, in fact, done a little bit of work in Red Dragon already. This screenshot from Anoka shows that it is possible to load vehicles into helicopters through modding. It means that the Red Dragon engine will be far friendlier to modders and allow them to create some really cool stuff. In the modding community, a lot of the primary mods have come to fruition and are releasing their final patches. In the meantime, we do in fact have two new mods on the table. Uh, first and foremost, we have Vastos Retextures. Vastos Retextures is primarily for jet fighters, and they're just Vasto creating skins for various vehicles and planes. So far, he has three, and he's working on more. BTR has released a package of Soviet skins, and they have actually completed the entire Soviet skin package, so they will be probably moving on to a new set relatively soon. There are a number of new mods coming into fruition. Uh, whether they will be completed in time is hard to say. Uh, War Game 1984, of course, is slowing down its progression just a little bit, and uh, a new proposed one called Back to Berlin is also trying to get started. We'll see if any headway gets made with those mods. In Red Dragon news, a number of patches have been rolled out. The biggest of those was one that nerfed what many considered to be a very abusive problem. That is, the rocket type artillery just absolutely devastating forces and the problem of the SEAD planes one-shotting all boats. Both of these have been patched and fixed and the game is more than ready to be played in beta once again to find far more relevant problems and bugs. Eugene developer and forum poster Mad Matt responded to a claim by people made on the forums that got pretty heated. People were asking why the expansion went to Asia instead of the more logical Southern Europe. Of course, Southern Europe would have been a massive theater and would have seen lots of amphibious landing opportunities as well as huge naval battles. Mad Matt responded as this. The reasons why those are not represent have always been explained so many times. First installment, European Escalation, was focused on Central Europe. Second installment, ALB, was focused on European Northern Fronts. Third installment, Red Dragon, will focus on Asia. Southern European countries were not added, for they had nothing to do on such theaters. Should we have had countries to such games, it would have been Belgium, Netherlands, and Finland, but no southern countries. We have once considered making a southern front after EE, but chose to go north instead. Why? The world trembles at the might of the Scandinavian military prowess. Maybe the world doesn't tremble at the might of the Scandinavians, but there is one Scandinavian country which has the luxury of having a complete indigenous armory. Sweden. Choice was as simple as that. What did the Southern Front offer in terms of original equipment? Greece? AMX-30? M48? M47? Chaffe? Italy, M47, M60, Leopard, Turkey, M48, M60, Leopard. I don't even refer to the plentiful of M113 variants. On the pack side, the same stuff. Hungary and Bulgaria were under-equipped with more than standard packed equipment. Spain was not even part of NATO before 1982, and its roaster typo, would have been the same as the other country above. Late Italy and Yugoslavia on pack side could have brought a bit of new stuff, but all considered the half a dozen pack and NATO countries involved in the southern front wouldn't have brought as much new stuff altogether than just Sweden alone. Hence the choice was easy. 
And now for a commentary on the 3v3 tournament of glorious design. The issue of it all is the tournament format. In a standard tournament like ESL you will have a linear tournament in which losers are eliminated and winners move on. In a long term format like Clash of the Clans 2, people gain a second chance as they are eliminated from the winners bracket, they are moved to the losers bracket and get a second chance to win the tournament. League format however works very differently. Everyone plays their matches in a non-linear order, so people will rush out and play as many matches as possible. But as you get closer and closer to the end, you start to see who the winners are and who the losers are. Near the end, the people who have no chance and no reason to play will stop. Because of this, it punishes teams that aren't the top, but still had easy wins against these teams that dropped out. So at the end of the 3v3 tournament of glorious design, the power teams were all fighting with each other, wanting to have some sort of finals. So now WTF and PLF have organized a grudge match on official finals to once for all indicate who wins the tournament. But of course it's all kind of pointless because this is outside the tournament and honestly doesn't matter. Future community tournaments are going to have to keep in mind retention as a main aspect of the tournament. Minimum team sizes will have to be much larger to allow for more opportunities to play. This makes it less friendly to enter, but guarantees that it will finish. <laughs>